right now this buffoonery this chaos is really hurting their chances you know for the upcoming election cycle and if trump doesn't look like that he has some kind of hold on what's happening and he's not seeing the writing on the wall it could hurt his presidential aspirations also so i think you get to the law of diminishing returns and half the battle is showing up so i think tom's showing up here at the end might actually serve to his benefit because there's desperation in the conference fascinating I just wonder what impact Donald Trump has at all. I mean, he endorsed Jim Jordan, and boy, that didn't last very long. Uh, you know, and how much of the conference answers to him? Yeah, you know, though, here's the the thing is, you know, Jordan still got 200 votes on that first, you know, merry-go-round, even though, yeah. you know, a lot of those people were voting because of, of fear uh, and really abject cowardice at times, I think, uh, because uh, that's what happens, right? You're reacting to your, your district, you're reacting to polling, you're reacting to your local committees. But I do think he still has a lot of sway. And, and, I, and I believe I read somewhere, I don't want to take credit for this, but it's true that Donald Trump might not be able to put you over the finish line, but he can certainly certainly bury your chances um, through rabble rousing, you know, that that portion of Congress that's completely loyal to him, regardless of if it's right or wrong. So I think that's the issue that you have is that you have to ride that tightrope of appealing to the election deniers, which is absolutely grotesque that I would even say that. Um, but he, but Tom has to. So now he has to call Donald Trump. He has to do things that might go against some type of moral code um, in order to get to the point he needs to be where he, where the Republicans can actually govern. I think that's the issue that you have is at what point. Right. Um, how far do you go in order to secure a position like that, especially when you're looking at what's happening in the in, glo in the global landscape right now? You know, we understood that uh, Tom Emmer had an uphill climb because there was some uh, opposition within the Republican conference to his support of a same-sex marriage initiative. Uh, you were cast out uh, in part of the Republican conference for officiating a gay wedding. Is this actually an issue that Tom Emmer can maybe help uh, to move the needle on inside the Republican conference? Yeah, I think I saw Congressman Rick Allen come to get, come out against Tom Ember because of his yeah. support of gay rights. I think that's absolutely shameful. And I know Rick Allen. I've also seen some of his text messages. You know, I was also the senior technical advisor for January 6th. So I don't know if he's the person you actually want to hang your hat on based on his belief systems, which could be hmm. quite insane. Um, but I do think that if Tom gets through this, it should signal that we're OK. Right. You shouldn't have a party that's just small enough to fit in the bedroom. And I was cast out because of officiating a same sex wedding. I would hope that this actually furthers, you know, marriage equality and same sex rights, because I think the Republican Party should be about freedom of the individual and not this bizarre sort of Christian nationalism tilt that they're having right now. So I think Tom being on that side is obviously the right side of history. And I would hope that that signals some kind of push forward. Um, for equality across the board. But I, I'm not trying to be pessimistic here, but looking at some of the individuals in the Republican conference now um, and where they're slanted, I think that's still going to be an uphill battle. But Tom being there based on his support for, for equal rights uh, or for, for equality, I think is a very positive thing. But again, I don't think it really changes where the Republican Party is going right now, sadly. Well, where is the Republican Party going, especially in the House? Uh, uh, Congressman, you know more about this than most. We talk about the five families on the air on a regular basis. We certainly know uh, the crazy eights, as I think Kevin McCarthy likes to refer to them. But even if Tom Emmer gets this done, he closes the deal while we're still talking. That's just the beginning of the hard part, right? I mean, my goodness, how do you govern this conference? And will he suffer the same fate as Kevin McCarthy? I feel like anybody who's speaker right now is is really the frog in the pot of boiling water. Yeah, it's getting I, you know, hot, Congress. It's just, <laughs> so it, it you know just slowly turns up the heat until they're done. They're just gone, and I think I think Tom making it a year would be a miracle if he would even get through. You're, you you make such a valid point, um, really an intelligent point. Is that what happens when you win? Uh, <laughs> Tom is going to be the dog catching the car. <laughs> so I think that's the issue that you have right now in the Republican conference. Wow. Uh, we're, we're looking at a, a gigantic pool of nose in the uh, words of Jake Sherman, who just posted on Twitter uh, from Punchbowl. Uh, the roll call vote is over. 26 House Republicans said they would vote for someone else besides Tom Emmer when this goes to the floor. What does that tell yeah, you? I, <laughs> it tells me I think my three out of 10 chances were correct. There we are. Um, you know, uh, I, you know, again, 
these these individuals are going to vote. I've been there. They're they're looking for deals, but you also have true believers. And the issue that you have with the Republican Party and where they're going, back to your original question there, and, and I apologize because I definitely want to answer it. You have yep. individuals that aren't based on any type of facts based policy making. They really are relying on fantasy, or they're really relying on the ignorance of their base, the way that they're voting, and the way that they're talking, even you know with media and with press. You can't. We're we're to a point in our history. You can't have election deniers, people who actually rejected the electors based on a multitude of conspiracy theories that are so outlandish that a six year old wouldn't believe them. Um, but you have these individuals that are voting based on that mindset for things that really affect the United States of America on a global scene, but also domestically when it comes to actually monies and expenditure of monies and what happens to public services. So the Republican Party, I think, needs to get back to facts based. But the fact that you just saw or what Jake Sherman put out there, I think you see people that are voting based on a base that's been radicalized and weaponized through disinformation. And I think it's going to be very difficult for the GOP to turn that around. And I think that's why you see the difficulty in getting a speaker because the facts based and the truth based, anybody who has any real semblance of wanting to make policy based on data are being pushed aside by the fantasy based individuals that are in the conference right now. And I think that's, that's, that's where the GOP is. And I think it's going to go that way for a while. Speaking of where the GOP is, you tweeted this morning ahead of uh, all the rounds of voting seven Republican candidates for speaker. At that point, we had seven for those who weren't following too closely Seven Republican candidates for speaker supported efforts to overturn the 2020 election. You write many of those were my former colleagues in the House. My message to them, I saw the data from the January 6th committee. The election was not stolen. Denounce Trump. Put people over party. Will Tom Emmer do that? I think, you know, Tom was, you know, one of those few. Yes. In the conference that voted to affirm it. And I hope that he can. But even with Tom, somebody who I've known for a while and had real frank conversations with, I think it's gonna be a very difficult battle for him. I, I I think trying to actually rally a conference that doesn't want to be rallied or that delights in this type of political, you know, political crazy making and really is loyal to Trump over constituents and what happens in this country. I don't know if Tom I, I think Tom is gonna to have an amazingly hard uphill battle trying to, I would say trying to join those factions together. I don't think as, as, you know, William Wallace, you know, in the movie Braveheart, you know, said to Robert the Bruce, unite the clans. I don't think he's going to be able to do that. Um, I think it's going to be very difficult. I think he is, if he wins, he is going to be the proverbial frog in the water that's slowly being boiled. I think it's going to be very difficult for him to get through. And it's going to take a, a master's class in politicking. But sadly, that means making deals with people that, frankly, don't want to know the truth uh, and would rather base their decision making on some kind of bizarre direct link to the supernatural that they think they have. And, and I think that's the issue Tom's going to have. 